at milk. It's not like a, chickens will lay eggs. But I don't. I won't even get into how horrible factory farming conditions are for for chickens. But if you just had a chicken running around here, it would lay an egg every 30 hours. That's the way they, we've been bred them to to just be egg layers. Cows will not run around secreting milk unless somebody impregnates it and takes its calf away. So they do suffer, and nothing suffers more than the mother and the calf as they're being separated, and that's what turned me vegan. 28 years ago, I stopped using dairy products because I saw a film of a calf being thrown into the back of a truck and its mother crying and the calf crying as it's being pulled farther and farther away, and I knew enough nutrition to know I didn't need that stuff, and I had enough of a heart to know I didn't want to be a part of it. And people have to understand that we don't share we don't share the milk with the calf. People have this idea that the calf is there. You know, in India, that was the idea. India created this whole idea of a sacred cow because they didn't want people killing these dairy animals. They wanted to be able to get their milk. So they let them share a little bit with the calf. And then when the calf was old enough to, to not need its mother's milk all the time, they just shove it out in the street. And that's why there's all those cows wandering around the streets. Those are the unwanted dairy calves, and they can feel okay that, well, we're not killing it, but it's like our, you know, our stray animals running around the streets. It's not a very nice life. So just because we can do that doesn't mean we should do that. And, and dairy products are not an ethical, um, ethical endeavor anywhere. There was a group of, of Hindus, of uh, I think the Hare Krishna sect, trying to uh, start a dairy farm down in West Virginia where they were going to let the calves live out their natural lives and they weren't going to impregnate the cows every year. They were going to have this natural dairy where they were going to be as kind to the cows as possible, never slaughter them. After a few, a couple of years of trying to do that, they realized they would have to sell that milk for about $35 a quart in order to pay their expenses. If they're going to let these cows live out their natural life and feed the calves, that's how much money it would cost to have a humane a quart of milk to sell to somebody. So they're just doing it for themselves and not selling it. And that's the lesson we need to learn. In order to, to have humane milk, we'd have to have it exorbitantly expensive. Um, and then the last part of it is we suffer too. Consuming dairy and other animal products raises cancer risk and does not result in stronger bones. If people understand that, there was a study, uh, Harvard University did a huge nurses' health study. It was published in 1999 in the American Journal of Public Health that found that the, that the women that drink the most milk actually have weaker bones than the women that drink the least milk. That the fracture rate from osteoporosis is actually higher for the high milk drinkers than it's for the lower milk drinkers. Which, is, which isn't to say that's the only reason, but it's one of the reasons why drinking milk doesn't do a body good, and it certainly doesn't do the animal's body good, and it doesn't do this planet any good. From a global warming standpoint, the dairy cows are the biggest animals we have. We, we've bred these cows, these Holstein cows. They're the sweetest, gentlest creatures around. You can ask the people from the farm sanctuaries. They've been bred to be gentle and docile so they can be handled and milked and touched. But they're, but they're giants. We've bred them to be these giant animals so their mothers will produce a lot of milk. A full-grown Holstein male cow, bull, will grow to be about 3,000 pounds, whereas a full-grown beef cow will only grow to be about eight or 900 pounds. These are huge, huge animals that produce a lot of manure and pass a lot of gas and belch a lot, and they probably do more to influence global warming than any other animals on this planet is these huge dairy cows. So we're killing them, they're killing us, and together we're killing the planet. Um, so, what's that? The China study is always one of the problems. There was a book that came out a few years ago called The China Study by a fellow named T. Colin Campbell, a professor of nutrition at Cornell, close to where I live upstate. And uh, in the T. Colin Campbell started out as an, as an animal scientist, trying to, get, trying to figure out how to get cows to grow bigger faster. And he found that if you fed them more animal protein, cows are naturally vegetarians, vegans, but if you sneak some animal protein into their feed, they will grow bigger faster, which is a good idea, except that they get a lot more cancers. And but uh, nobody cares about that, and so you know here we are, here we are consuming that. Colin Campbell's also noted he he found that animals were grazing in areas where there was a lot of dioxin in the environment from from factories that those cows got even more cancer, and he's actually credited with discovering that dioxin was a carcinogen. He says in this book that the protein from dairy cows, this casein protein, is more carcinogenic than dioxin. He's a man that should know. So read this book. I have a couple books for sale, t-shirts, um, and I thank you all for your attention. Go vegan!